Okay, welcome to this very specific lecture on the Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, or the Hardy-Weinberg Hardy model, which is a mathematical model for uh, determining changes in population structure and their genetics. It was co-discovered by an English mathematician and a German physicist, which is why it has two names, Hardy-Weinberg. Um, <coughs> But let's just get right into it. Oh. All right, so the Hardy-Weinberg principle starts with its two equations. The first one is this P plus Q equals 1, which is an equation for the frequencies of alleles <coughs> in a population. This is easiest demonstrated with two alleles, which we're, what we're going to do. The second half of the equation is P squared plus 2P, 2PQ plus Q squared equals 1. And this is for predict predicting the frequencies of genotypes in a population. Okay, again, we're looking at a population, and this is used for uh, predicting genotypic frequencies within a population or determining if a population is evolving or not. Okay, um, if a predicted and expected and expected, uh, sorry, expected and observed model are different uh, from one generation to the next, then evolution is said to be occurring. Um, if not, then it's said to be in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. And as you remember evolution, um, we're talking about microevolution in this case, is defined as a change in allele frequencies over generations within a population, not within individuals. All right, so we're going to start with the first equation, P plus Q equals 1, and we're going to just talk about two alleles. So if any, in any population where there are two alleles for a gene at one, link, um, at one locus, P is the frequency of allele 1. To determine that, you just take the total number of alleles and the total number of that first allele and figure out the proportion. And then Q would be the second allele. Take the number of those alleles in the population divided by the total number of alleles. Okay, we remember alleles from genetics last semester where you're looking at generally just a capital letter and lowercase letter representing the uh, dominant recessive genotypes. <coughs> All right, so we're going to take you through this. So if there are 100 plants with two colors, so two phenotypes, they're determined by the presence of two alleles at one locus, and it's a dominant recessive relationship. Okay, these are, these are the three on the side here. Uh, big R, big R is red, so is big R, little r, and little r, little r is white. So how would you calculate P and Q if 50 plants are big R, big R, and 20 are big R, little r, and 30 are little r, little r? Very simple, you just total up the number of big R's divided by the total, so that's 50 times two, 20 times one, divided by 200 total. And then Q would be the little r, so 30 times 2, 20 times 1, divided by 200. There you have 60% uh, of the population has big R's, 60% uh, of the alleles are big R's, 40% are little r's. And these should add up to 1, so 0.6 plus 0.0 plus 0.4 is 1, so it works. Alright, so then on the other hand, <coughs> These frequencies can be used to predict the frequency of each genotype if mating is random. So we can take the probability of having big R, big R by squaring P. And same thing for um, little r, little r by squaring Q. And then uh, 2PQ, 2 times P times Q, is going to be our genotype for big R, little r. So that was, this is the expected frequencies of each of the genotypes. P squared is 0.36, um, Q squared is 0.16, and 2PQ is 0.4. Again, this is expected. So let's say 50, we actually look at the genetics, 50 of them are homozygous dominant, 20 are heterozygous, and 30 are homozygous recessive. And we can compare that to our predicted to determine if they are in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. If they are in Heidi-Weinberg equilibrium, those frequencies will match up. OK, 
Okay, so we have 0 0.5, 0 0.2, and 0.3. All right, simple math there. And our originals were 0 0.36, 0 0.48, and 0.16. So you would say they are not in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. So some, something is going on. It's evolving in some way. Okay, and there are five ways in which it can evolve, or five assumptions of the Hardy-Weinberg principle. Um, we are assuming if they are in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, they have no mutations, the mating is random, there's no natural selection, there's a large population size, and there's no immigration or emigration. Okay, so let's say random mating. What if um, the red flowers are uh, more attractive to honeybees than the white flowers? That could account for some sort of selection, um, and the mating wouldn't be random. They don't really mate. Flowers don't, but their pollination isn't random. So if any of these assumptions are not met, that's where we have evolution occurring. We say it's not in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. Or in other words, if a population doesn't exhibit Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, then it is evolving due to one of these factors. All right, so here's a practice problem. Phenylketonuria is a rare genetic condition where individuals cannot metabolize the amino acid phenylalanine, which is found in a lot of dairy and meat products. And it's a recessive disorder found about one in every 10,000 people that are born. And under current practices and medical practices, it meets the five assumptions for Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. You could argue that, but we're going to say it does. So we can then determine the percentage of the population that are carriers based on the assumption that it's in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. So we have Q squared, that's the proportion of homozygous recessive in the population, which was one in 10,000, or two out of 20,000 um, alleles. So that equals 0 0.001. All right, so to determine P, we can go back to the other equation. First, we can, uh, we will set do the square root of Q squared to figure out what Q is. Do 1 minus Q to figure out what P is. It would be 0.99 and Q is 0.01. And then we want to figure out how many are carriers, which means how many are heterozygous, which equals 2PQ. So 2 times 0.99 times 0.01, and that equals 0 0.0198, or 1.9% of the populations are carriers of phenylketonuria. Okay, so there's an example of a problem. There's the principles. Um, there's how you do it. We'll go over a lot more of these in class.